day on Rappler. Superstorm Sandy wreaks unprecedented havoc on New York and other cities on the U.S. East Coast. Uh, as a revolutionary, maganda talaga. Mas mas mahigit pa yung uh, yung baril kaysa asawa. And MILF members are divided over giving up their guns. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Superstorm Sandy batters the eastern United States with New York bearing the brunt of its fury. Power failures affect more than 6.5 million people in 13 states. At least 16 people are dead in the U.S., one person in Canada. This brings a death toll to 84 at this point, including the people killed in the Caribbean. In New York, storm surges flood Manhattan, sweeping cars down streets. The East River and the Hudson River flood subways and tunnels, like the Battery Tunnel, which links New York's financial center to Long Island. Authorities say the 108-year-old New York subway system has never seen this level of destruction. With the power out, the famous Manhattan skyline turns dark, with the Empire State Building becoming an eerie beacon of light, and Wall Street closed for the first time since the September 11, 2001 attacks. On top of a skyscraper luxury apartment, a crane partially collapses, leaving the arm precariously dangling over West 57th Street. Emergency power fails in a New York hospital, prompting personnel to evacuate patients. In Queens, 50 homes burn to the ground as 200 firefighters fight the blaze. Another 20 homes also catch fire. In Chelsea, the superstorm pulls off the facade of a three-story building. The storm surges break a levee in New Jersey, flooding Atlantic City, which is knee-deep in seawater. New York police conduct rescue missions on boats in Brooklyn's Coney Island and Staten Island where reports say some houses were, quote, flooded up to their attics. Earlier, New York authorities closed the subway train system and nearly all tunnels and bridges Sunday. New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg's earlier appeal for people to evacuate was largely ignored by residents, estimated in the tens of thousands. As night fell, Bloomberg warns it is too late to get away and tells people to stay put but try to go to higher ground. If you're in your home or somewhere safe where you can remain, stay there. Uh, the time for relocation or evacuation is over. Conditions outside are dangerous and they're only going to get worse in the hours ahead. Forecasters say Sandy, previously a hurricane when it was in the tropics, is now a cyclone. The cyclone merged with snowstorms and is now being called a superstorm. While the devastation is unprecedented, weather experts say the worst isn't over. Blizzards, heavy rains, and fierce winds are expected to batter the Midwest. Officials say damages may reach up to over $7 billion. Flooding and bad weather closed down major airports in the Northeast. President Barack Obama declares a major disaster in the states of New York and New Jersey, clearing the way for federal grants and loans. The HMS Bounty, a replica of the British vessel immortalized in Mutiny in the Bounty and used in movies Pirates of the Caribbean, sinks about 90 miles off North Carolina. The 180-foot, three-masted ship attempts to flee east away from Sandy when the ship begins taking on water. The situation deteriorated quickly and the crew make their way to two life rafts. 14 of the 16 people on board get off the ship safely. The Bounty's longtime captain, Robin Walbridge, is missing while the body of the second man was found later. All of the crew members were wearing orange survival suits with strobe lights designed to keep them afloat, warm, and easy to find. Weather experts say temperatures in that part of the ocean dipped rapidly. U.S. President Barack Obama and Republican rival Mitt Romney scale back their presidential campaigns as Hurricane Sandy carves a path of destruction across the U.S. eastern seaboard Monday. Carmela Fonbuena reports from Ohio. It is exactly a week before the U.S. elections when Hurricane turned Superstorm Sandy is throwing the campaign schedule into chaos. President Barack Obama cancels a number of campaign stops, including one here in all-important state Ohio. Vice President Joe Biden is also supposed to come here, but he canceled last minute. We've been monitoring the news. New York is badly hit. The subway is flooded. 
For the first time in a century, the New York Stock Exchange closed for the second day. At least 15 deaths have been reported here in the U.S. Governor Mitt Romney also cancels a number of campaign stops, but he is proceeding as scheduled to Kettering, Ohio, to attend a, quote, storm relief event called the Buckeye State. Ohio is one of the most important states, if not the most important swing state, that will decide if President Barack Obama stays in the White House or if it's time for Governor Mitt Romney to take over. History shows that no Republican has ever won the presidency without Ohio. No one and latest statistics show that they are statistically tied. How Sandy is going to affect the elections remains to be seen, but strong wins still could discourage early voters here in Ohio. It is a bloc that is known to favor President Obama. This Rappler, Carmela Von Buena, Ohio. The snow, the storm is expected to move to the Midwest where Carmela Von Buena is waiting for the campaigns to continue. The Aquino government's framework agreement with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front involves the decommissioning or disarmament of the MILF. But some members are divided over the issue. Paterno S. Maquel reports. Guns, guns, and guns. It's a familiar scene this part of Mindanao. That is why the disarmament of Muslim rebels is one of the key points of the peace framework. But the idea of giving up their guns is dividing members of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. A Nemayalef commander admits some of their soldiers distrust the framework agreement with the Philippine government. They cite a botched agreement in 2008 that would have created a Bangsamoro substate. Uh, hindi natin yan sila masisisi kasi mulat pa man sa ano, di ba narinig natin yung uh, uh, pag ano sa Moedi. Mm. Kasi yung Moedi na yun, kaya nagkaroon ng ibang ano yung ibang grupo mm -hmm. dahil uh, nakita nila na parang niloloko lang sila ng gobyerno. The resistance also comes from culture through generations of armed rebellion. Uh, as a revolutionary, maganda talaga. Mas, mas mahigit pa yung, uh, yung baril kaysa asawa. Kasi ano mo naman yung asawa, hindi mo naman pwedeng gamitin yun pang ano mo sa, sa kalaban. MILF troops also speak to Rappler but refuse to be named. They say they will follow their leaders but believe they need their firearms to protect their homeland. Some members of the MILF do not see the point of giving up their firearms. They love their guns after all more than their wives. One of them tells us he's willing to lay down his gun only to take it up again. This sentiment arouses fear of another rebel movement that could attract defectors from the MILF. A breakaway group, the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Movement insists on armed rebellion for a separate Bangsamoro state. But MILF Chair Murad Ibrahim says the peace deal will make too many firearms unnecessary. That is, if the peace framework and the new autonomous government uphold justice and boost the economy. So that is where we are looking forward. When there is security, when there is justice, when there is oppression, when then they have they are served with their basic necessities. Mm -hmm. Then uh, they might say, I will, ha I will marry another three uh, <laughs> wife. But negotiators have yet to iron out the laying down of firearms. The government and the MILF resumed their peace talks in November, a process that largely depends on uncertain compromises and promises of a framework that is not quite a treaty. Paterno S. Makel, Rappler, Maguindanao. Apple announces it's letting go of executives in charge of Maps, Siri, and other software in a move to shake up its management. Among them is Apple veteran Scott Forstall. Regarded as one of the more important executives in Apple, many say he embodies the technology vision of late Chief Executive Steve Jobs. Apple Chief Executive Tim Cook says this aims to provide enhanced roles for other executives to better integrate its hardware, software, and services. Forstall's refusal to sign the public apology following complaints over Apple's new map service may have played a role in his dismissal. Cook instead signed the apology letter in September. Forstall will leave Apple next year and serve as an advisor to Cook until his departure. The wife of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un reappears after dropping out of the public eye for 50 days. The rumors Ri Sol-ju was either pregnant or fell out of favor. 
North Korea's Korean Central News Agency says Ri joined her husband at a musical performance and a football match in Pyongyang Monday. In July, Pyongyang State Television confirmed her identity as Kim's wife after pictures of her by his side appeared at official events. Her absence in early September triggered speculation she might be pregnant. Others suggest she was doing penance for failing to wear the lapel pin that all adult North Koreans are required to wear. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number two, China snubs an attempt of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations to start talks on a multilateral code of conduct governing the South China Sea. At the sidelines of a regional meeting in Pattaya, Thailand, Vietnamese Deputy Foreign Minister Pham Quang Vin says the 10-nation ASEAN wants to start talks but is meeting stoic resistance from China. A Thai foreign ministry official says it might take another two years to agree on a formal code of conduct. With the Philippines, Brunei, Taiwan and Malaysia asserting sovereignty over some parts of the sea and China claiming all of it, the disputed sea is Asia's biggest potential military trouble spot. At number eight, international observers say the parliamentary election in Ukraine is heavily tilted in favor of President Viktor F. Yanukovych's party of regions. They say the incumbent leader's camp abused government resources, manipulated media coverage, and jailed two prominent opposition leaders. The almost completely counted vote showed the party of regions well ahead of its opponents with about 32 percent of the vote. This election is a gauge of developing democracy in the former Soviet Republic of 45 million, once viewed as being on a steady track toward integration with Europe after the Orange Revolution of 2004. And at number nine. No investigative report from a sports magazine or mainstream media triggered Lance Armstrong's fall from grace. It was amateur or citizen journalists using Twitter and little-known cycling blogs that pushed the story out. The former Tour de France superstars reported illicit drug use went unreported for so long, largely due to mainstream media's focus on Armstrong's incredibly inspirational story, the cycling community's code of silence, and fears of losing access to the rider's inner circle. Twitter users and a relatively little-known blog called NY Velocity didn't have any connection to cycle racing and were free to pursue whatever stories they wanted. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. In an interview set to air in November, Paul McCartney says Yoko Ono did not break up the Beatles. McCartney tells interviewer David Frost, she certainly didn't break the group up. The group was breaking up. The interview is set to air November 9th on the Al Jazeera English Channel. It coincides roughly with the Beatles' 50th anniversary this year. McCartney says John Lennon was, quote, definitely going to leave with or without Ono in the picture. Lennon said in the years before his death that band members quit before the formal disillusion in 1970. Every story on Rappler has its own mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click on how you feel, and your vote will come down to the mood navigator on Rappler's front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also places the top 10 stories that have gotten the most moods, um, votes on the mood meter and pushes them on the front page so you can use it to navigate to the stories. If we take a look at the story today, the top story, Obama declares a major disaster in two states. If you take a look at it, it's exactly 47 percent afraid, 47 percent sad. And even in the midst of disaster, you have 6 percent inspired. Remains the, the top story that's gotten the most votes, remains the top story for the Philippines. Moody's upgrades Philippine ratings, 83 percent happy. That contributes to the mood of the day. Today, most people remain happy in the Philippines. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Tuesday, October 30th, 2012. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.